I'm David Spencer. Welcome to Gardening with Bugs. Today's episode is a perfect example of why I do this channel Gardening with Bugs and that is to show you what is common practice with commercial growers and how it's easy to apply it to the home garden. There are so many examples on the internet of ways to get rid of fungus gnats. People grab anything from under the sink, mix it with some other sort of soap and pour it into the plant and say look you got rid of my fungus gnats. And <laughs> Man, maybe that works, but the detriment to your plant, uh, the cost and the nuisance of that is an absolute headache. And we really only see this with home growers. And I don't know why there's that big disconnect between information uh, between home growers and the gardening professional gardening world. But the professionals use Stratiolalaps schematis. Stratiolalaps schematis. The Latin names suck, but this is a predatory mite that lives in the soil and it eats fungus gnat larvae. It is absolutely the industry standard. I don't know many growers that don't use it. Those who don't pro are growing organically and just it's already probably in there or some other predator that does a similar job. This is a no brainer. In your house, you just put it in your plants, like a teaspoon or a tablespoon. In your greenhouse, you can just sprinkle it on a, on a flat you've just seeded. You can uh, add little bits and just loosely sprinkle it. It doesn't matter if it falls to the floor because it'll go underground and, and continue to feed on pests there. The only important thing is that you don't apply too much. Too much makes them run out of food really quickly and then die. The pests will come back and you'll have to reapply them. It's far better just to apply a little bit. We're looking at 25 mites per mil in a standard package. So only a couple milliliters per plant uh, is enough to get a population started. And as long as you're a bit tolerant and patient of the fungus gnats, and I know that's really tough. But if you can just give them a second try with that little bit amount of food, they will match their population to the pest and they'll stay there. You will, you might have the odd fungus not flying around, but you will not become a problem. And that could be a permanent application depending on how you grow your plants. Alternatively, in like a house plant situation, maybe eradication is the key. Sure, you can over inoculate. This stuff's not very expensive. We're talking about like 20 bucks for a bag that'll cover like 500 to 1,000 square feet. Stradiolalap schematis, it is the fungus gnat control of commercial growers. It can be and is used for home gardeners. So stop putting weird things on your plants or mixing your soil in a strange way. Just get these guys. Okay, fungus gnats feed on, in some cases, the fungus, but usually the root tips. And they really benefit from wet soil that's heavy in organic matter. Uh, famously, rice hulls became cheap and everybody started mixing it as, as a way of bulking potting soil in the commercial world. And fungus gnats got out of control and they found rice hulls in particular really promoted the development of these guys. So be conscious about what you're growing in. Maybe that's part of the problem, but usually if you can dry the media out a bit, which plants like, uh, you'll, you'll reduce the fungus gnat pressure right off the bat. But again, everyone gets it. It doesn't matter. As soon as you bring a plant inside soil, I know researchers that do... Um, pure culture analysis, they have to bake and sterilize their media, they still get fungus gnats. Um, and so they will use stradiolabs in the soil because it won't affect the plant tissue above ground in order to control these guys. They're vectors of disease and that's the only reason why it's, it's really a pest for commercial growers. Otherwise them nipping on, on the roots of some plants really wouldn't be a problem. In fact, in some cases it's advantageous because you want sometimes smaller, more compact plants like in poinsettias, for example. And some people will use something like bonsai, a growth inhibitor in order to get that. Um, but it's the, it's the spreading of things like root rot, very serious diseases that are vectored by fungus gnats that you really need to keep an eye on them. But again, this is not, it's not a complicated one. This isn't even a contentious issue. This is literally the commercial standard and you can literally buy it anywhere. It's just a living mite. Just make sure it's coming from somewhere close because the longer it's in transit, the more likely they are to starve um, or, or just perish because of, of um, adverse conditions. So make sure you can find a local uh, biocontrol company that supplies them. Make sure whoever you're buying them from isn't storing them in a fridge or something like that and giving you dead product. Um, and there you go, get the package as soon as you get it, 
put it in your house plants, put it in your greenhouse, get rid of those fungus gnats.